Throughout history, railways have always been seen with great romance by many. It's hard to pin down why, but there's certainly an appeal in watching the world roll by while relaxing with a nice drink, watching large machines do their work, or simply just waving at passengers as they pass by. It's a feeling that can be shared throughout the generations. But surprisingly, it also seems to be one that can be shared by the animal kingdom as well. Born in 1878, a young puppy was bought by the owner of the Macclesfield Hotel pub in Australia, and given the name Bob. At nine months old, Bob took a liking to the navvies that frequently drank there, who were developing the local railway at the time. He ended up following some of them to the railway lines and had to be brought back to his owner several times. Eventually, Bob ran away, living around the railways as a stray for many years. He was eventually picked up by local authorities and taken to Quorn, along with 50 or so other dogs to exterminate rabbits. It's unknown exactly if he was swapped or simply broke pack with the other dogs, but he again ended up as a stray, eventually caught by police in Port Augusta, where he would be adopted by a Mr. William Ferry in 1884. Eventually, Ferry was promoted to Petersburg Assistant Station Master in early 1885, and as such, Bob ended up spending most of his time around the station. Having lived around railways all his life, Bob was at this point accustomed to travelling by train, and not being keen on a domestic life, would happily hop aboard any train that rolled into Petersburg Station. Given there was little Ferry could do to stop Bob, coupled with the fact Bob would eventually make his way back on his own, Ferry just let him travel around and because of how friendly Bob was towards passengers and footplate crews, nobody really objected to giving him a free ride. He travelled thousands of kilometres from Petersburg, simply living a free life as a friendly stray, frequently visiting a butcher shop in Adelaide for treats and accepting food from anyone kind enough to offer it. It was mostly railway staff and footplate crews who were familiar with Bob, but over time he became friends with frequent passengers too. Supposedly, Bob's adventures took him as far as Udnadatta, Queensland and even Western Australia. Bob also had a preference on what engines he'd ride on, seeming happier to hop aboard some of the bigger, imported American locomotives used by the railway, often sitting near the back of the cab on the tender. He seemed to have a dislike for smaller, suburban engines too, likely due to the lack of space in the cab. It wasn't unheard of for Bob to bark at passengers to clear out a third-class compartment for himself, with many railway staff having to reassure passengers that Bob was harmless, he just wanted a ride. He wasn't just a railway dog either, as he was known to occasionally hop aboard steamships due to him confusing the ship's whistle for that of a locomotive. Eventually, Bob was gifted a collar by a frequent passenger after he was dog-napped by a farmer. The collar had two tags on it, along with two brass plates, with one reading, presented by McLean Bros and Rick, and the other delightfully reading, Stop me not, but let me jog, for I am Bob, the driver's dog. After Ferry left Petersburg Station, local railway men maintained the registration of ownership over Bob to keep him around and prevent him from being classified as a stray. Despite his easygoing life, Bob wasn't free from getting involved in accidents. Initially, Bob would often fall from the platform or the footplate of a locomotive, as he was still trying to perfect the art of jumping from one to the other. It's reported that on one occasion, he fell from a train travelling between Manura and Saddleworth, and had to walk two miles to Saddleworth with an injured leg. Eventually though, he got so good at jumping, he could easily hop from one train to another while they were still moving. His tail also suffered greatly, being caught in a firebox door and eventually losing an inch off the end after slipping off an engine. His fur also caught on fire on one occasion, but no accident was more humiliating than one recorded by the Petersburg Times. Quote, Only during one winter did he look miserable, when some employee cut off all his hair except that of his neck and tip of his tail. He was supposed to look like a diminutive lion, but his voice betrayed him. Regardless, this didn't stop Bob from travelling with railway men and passengers alike, becoming somewhat of a folk hero around South Australia, with several papers writing about him in numerous articles. Some even reported he was friends with the manager of the Silverton Tramway Company and several other important railway operators. For many years, Bob ventured around Australia as he pleased, hopping aboard anything from goods to passenger services, much to the delight of drivers and firemen running the engines. Alas, 
all great heroes eventually meet their end, and Bob was sadly no exception. On the 29th of July, 1895, it was reported that Bob had visited his favourite butcher shop on Hindley Street in Adelaide before wandering down a nearby alley. There, he barked at another passing dog, let out a pitiful howl, and dropped dead at the ripe old age of 17. Newspapers all over the world reported the death of Bob, with the story getting reported as far as Great Britain and the US. Railway men around the world mourned the death of this one dog that had become a folk hero to everyone in Australia. On the 17th of August that year, a poem was published in the Advertiser in honour of Bob, reading, Homekeeping dogs have homely wits, their notions tame and poor. I scorn the dog who humbly sits before the cottage door. Or those who weary vigils keep, or follow lonely kine, A dreary life mid stupid sheep shall ne'er be lot of mine. For free from thrall I travel far, no fixed abode I own, I leap aboard a railway car, by everyone I'm known. Today I'm here, tomorrow brings me miles and miles away, Borne swiftly on steam's rushing wings, I see fresh friends every day. Each driver from the footplate hails my coming with delight, I gain from all upon the rails a welcome ever bright. I share the perils of the line with mates from end to end, who would not for a silver mine have harm before their friend. Let other dogs snarl and fight, and round the city prowl, or render hideous the night with unmelodious howl. I have a cheery bark for all, no ties my travels clog, I hear the whistle, that's the call, for Bob, the driver's dog. His collar now resides in the National Railway Museum in Port Adelaide. In 2009, the local community of Peterborough, as Petersburg is now known, had a statue of Bob put up. In Tarawi, several points of interest are marked on information boards as part of the Bob the Railway Dog Trail. Bob's life story has since been romanticised in several fictional stories and served as the inspiration for many others. All in all, Bob was perhaps the biggest shining example that strangers are often just friends you haven't made yet. As much as it's known that dogs are a man's best friend, I think we can all agree that no other will ever be a railway man's best friend better than Bob, the driver's dog. Subscribe for more.